you know, we had uh, several instances of um, some kind of racial uh, hate crimes uh, towards our program and uh, incredibly upsetting for all of us. This is Utah women's basketball head coach, Lynn Roberts. It's shocking, um, you know, in a non, it, it, like there's so much diversity in, in, in a, on a college campus. And so you're just not exposed to that very often. And so when you are, it's like, uh, you know, and you, you have people say, man, I can't believe that happened, but uh, you know, racism is real and it happens and it's, uh, it's awful. And so for our players, whether they are, um, you know, white, black, green, whatever, no one knew how to handle it. You know, she is discussing an incident that recently took place involving her team as the NCAA tournament is in full swing. And it was really upsetting. And for our players and, and staff to not feel safe in an NCAA tournament environment, um, it's messed up. And so we uh, moved hotels and, you know, the NCAA and, and Gonzaga worked to get us in a new hotel and we appreciate that. Um, but yeah, that's what happened and it was a distraction and upsetting and um, unfortunate, you know, uh, th this should be a positive for everybody involved. This should be a joyous time for our program and to have kind of a black eye on that experience is unfortunate. Um, so yeah, that's what, that's what happened. Let's talk about it all first. Olivia, AKA Sports with Logs on TikTok, broke it down further. Utah was hate crimed and had to move hotels during their time in the NCAA tournament. Despite their first two rounds being hosted by Gonzaga, their hotel was in Kernel Eye, Idaho, which isn't only a 40 minute drive, but it's in a whole different state than Gonzaga. And I feel like that's a problem in itself. Apparently there's a lack of hotels in Spokane and Gonzaga received a waiver from the NCAA to allow teams to stay in Kernel Eye. But on Thursday night, the whole team went out for dinner while walking to the restaurant, a white truck got near them, revved its engine and yelled the N word before speeding off. The deputy AD, Shermel Green, who is black, said everybody was in shock and just frozen. We kept walking, just shaking our heads like, I can't believe that. Now, after their dinner, two hours later, almost the exact same thing happened again, but this time with two trucks. They were revving their engines, making a lot of noise in an intimidating way while yelling the N-word again to those present. Charmel said I got emotional and started to cry, and the team had to coordinate a way to walk each other back to the hotel to ensure that they stayed safe. Now, they had a police escort, but it was from Washington, and they were in Idaho, so they couldn't do anything about it, and that just adds to why staying in a whole different state is such a problem. Utah worked with NCAA and Gonzaga to get a new hotel in Spokane, which is where Gonzaga is, but this still had an impact on the team. Head coach Lynn Roberts said it's incredibly upsetting for all of us. There's so much diversity on a college campus, and so you're not exposed to that very often. But when you are, you have people say, man, I can't believe that happened, but racism is real. It happens, and it's awful. She continued by saying it was a distraction, upsetting, and unfortunate. It should have been such a fun and memorable time for the team, but this is what they had to endure. And added, I think it happens a lot, and it doesn't get talked about enough. Charmel also said, I will never forget the sound that I heard, the intimidation of the noise that came from the engine and the N-word. I go to bed and hear it every night since I've been here, I couldn't imagine us having to stay there and relive those moments. Gonzaga made a statement to KSL, who's reporting all this, and they also made their own statement, which you could pause and read. As for Utah, they filed a police report, but there's been no updates on that, and they lost their second round game against Gonzaga last night, 77-66. Having to go through something like this is terrifying, and I truly hope it's a wake-up call for team safety going forward. Please give her a follow if you can. Before we get into it, if there are any stories we missed, if there are any that you would like to submit, get at me and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok DMs are open and please, if you can become a channel member to support us and or go to tyt.com slash join to keep the network afloat. There's a lot of reporting on this. Firstly, we have seen how inequality has been paramount within the NCAA. It was only a few years ago during peak COVID when Sedona Prince, then a member of the Oregon Ducks, she then went to TCU, called out the weight room comparisons to the men, the food comparisons to the men, the practice courts to the men. And then we started seeing some real progress only because the NCAA was called out by one of their own who they received free labor from. Now we have a story of racism in women's college basketball 
that simply should have never existed in the first place. And this is from Axios. The team, along with cheerleaders and band, band excuse me, members, were walking to a restaurant when a driver in a white truck revved the engine and yelled the N-word. As the group started to leave the establishment, two drivers revved their truck's engines and yelled the N-word at them. The students coordinated their return trip to the hotel, as Olivia said, not walking alone, just to feel some semblance of safety. This area has long held appeal among extremists who have made some inroads into local politics in recent years. We have covered that as well, mainly with factions of the Proud Boys running and supporting local politicians in local races. Northern Idaho has become a hub for white nationalists and other right-wing groups. Now, as I look at this story, all I can think of is how the NCAA failed Utah. It's something that they really are perfecting. I also remember seeing a TikTok from a member of the women's Michigan basketball team and their travel or lack thereof, the arrangements that were put in place by the NCAA completely screwing this team. Having to wait on a plane the NCAA not allowing, according to this player, pilots to fly even though they said they would. So here's my question as I look at all of this. Why didn't they block out hotels? Why didn't they try to help this team as much as possible? Because at the end of the day, the NCAA, a nonprofit, is saying that all oh, the, the rooms were booked. The rooms were booked. You didn't want to block off rooms for the visiting team. You knew a team was going to be coming. In the women's tournament, until they get to the later stages, the higher seed has a home game. They knew. I know it's 35 minutes, 40 minutes, 45 minutes, what have you. But this is a byproduct of the NCAA failing the women. And again, they have done this for many years now. 